Hey guys, Call of here, and I know it seems like I'm kind of back from the dead, but I'm going to be showing you something uh, kind of cool that I've been working on. Uh, not necessarily that I've been working on, but I'm going to show you something kind of cool. It is a way to generate mobs in your world that have custom looks, and we're going to be going over that today pretty quickly. I'm going to assume you know what functions are if you don't. There's a ton of videos out there to figure out what Minecraft functions are in 1.12. If you still don't and don't really care about this, then at least you can know about what I've been up to. So I'm going to pull in something from another world really quickly. So to do this custom mob setup, you're going to need one thing right away. It's going to be a link in the description, Emerald Fires Random uh, Number Generator. It's called Emerald Fires Random Number Generator. It's You can get it from the link in the description. It might come with all his other math functions. So just delete those, just keep math random. And then you're, once you put it, you go to your saves, you go to your world, then you go to data, you go to functions, and then you put his math random folder. It'll just be a folder. It'll, when you extract it, it'll just be a folder called math, and there should be random in there. You are going to open up random. And what you got to do is you got to mess with it a little bit. You have to do add these two commands that I added here, I believe. Yes, I added these two commands. Scoreboard player set at s, math input one, one. Score player set at s math input to 100. So the point of this math random generator is it's a bunch of commands that'll give you a random number between two ranges, ranges being math input one and math input two, and it'll give you math output as a range. So I made it one to 100 for anything that gets this function added to it. Whatever gets these commands run at it, it is going to make their range one and 100. I just did that because 100%, you know? Um, so what you want to do in your world is do scoreboard objectives add math underscore input one dummy. You want to add the scoreboards to your world, of course. Math input two dummy and math output. And now keep in mind that this, every time it runs this, it's going to be summoning two extra entities at that entity. So be careful how many you do. That's going to be crucial for how we do the rest of these commands. So I created a new folder called mobs. Now, if you really don't care about like how this works, I will have a download in the description as well with these three folders that you can just put in. Uh, they'll be empty though. Uh, they won't have these examples that I have here, but um, you can mess around with them yourself. So we're going to have a new function file called zombies inside the mobs. This is going to mess with the zombies. So I'm going to have, these are a bunch of, uh, these are a bunch of examples. So what you, now an additional thing that you're also going to want, uh, you could put it in the mobs folder. You're going to want something that is really generic. We'll just call it general. I put it in a settings folder, settings colon general. So it's a settings folder that says general, but we can put it in here for now. So inside general, you're going to want to do execute at E. Okay. So, well, at random type equals zombie tag equals not tagged. Okay. And then do function colon uh, function mobs colon zombie. So what this is going to do is if it finds a zombie that is not tagged with the tag tagged. Okay. Yes, I did catch that. Um, it's going to play this function at it that's in this folder. So what this function is going to do, it's going to play this function, right? So what this function is going to do is it's going to execute at that random zombie. It's going to give it a math random. So it'll give it a number between 1 and 100. Then it's going to, if the number was between 1 and 20, this is if output is between 1 and 20, and the zombie is not tag tagged, which it won't be. So you're good. It is going to execute at, it is going to change the entity data of all zombies in the world that don't have a tag tagged to be a decaying civilian it'll make it have it'll it'll just change the zombie to have the tag tagged so it'll be like oh now we've changed it to a special zombie it's gonna change its name it's gonna give it armor all that good stuff then if it's between 21 and 40 it's gonna do the same thing but it's gonna give it a different color armor in this example if it's between 41 and 50 it'll do the same thing except this one's gonna have golden armor uh no sorry if it's between 50 and 70 it'll have golden armor so basically 1 in 50. That's a 50% 50 chance that it will just be a decaying civilian. There's a 51 to 70, which is 20% chance it's a lost survivor. 71 to 80, it is a swarmer, which we'll go over that next. And just so you have another example of what you can do with this. 
And then 81 to 100 is just a crawler, a baby zombie. And then after it does all this stuff, checking whether it, what number it's basically at and doing the right thing, it's going to reset that zombie that got the function executed at its math output so you don't get a bunch of uh, nasty things on the scoreboard, so the scoreboard will stay pretty empty. Um, so the next thing to note so the first part is easy you're doing NC data at, you're executing at this one zombie and whatever he gets it's going to ch change all the brand new zombies into that type um now you might want one where you don't want too many so a swarmer would be really annoying if it picked a zombie and then it's like you know what this whole batch of zombies that spawned this eight zombies are all going to be swarmers that would be really annoying so this is instead executing at a random zombie that's not tagged so instead of executing at all zombies that's not tagged it's executing at a random zombie that's not tagged and it's playing a new function called custom mobs swarm. So custom mobs is a folder I use for custom mobs. Swarm, what it does is pretty simple. It's gonna execute at that zombie and it's going to change its entity data, make it into a swarm leader, give it the tag tag so it stops messing with it. Um, it's gonna change it into a swarm leader and it's just at that zombie, it's summoning eight zombies at it. Uh, that have a tag of tag so it doesn't mess with them it's really important that you add the tag tagged to all your special entities otherwise it'll just start going over and over so it'll be like here's a zombie random number all zombies have another zombie random number all those zombies have another zombie or it'll just quick change quickly change between entities really quick so make sure you have the tag um so let's mess around with this so let's do slash reload and we're going to do game rule game loop function mobs colon general okay so the general will just do constantly look for a zombie and play that function so let's go into uh, okay there okay there you go so we play we drop it and there's a slight lag only because of the world we're using and we're using command block output being true uh, so i don't have the setting set up but here is the lost survivor you can try and guess why the armor is textured that way um, but as you can see, it's giving us a random set of zombies as we go. And um, there's the swarmer, a swarm leader with all the swarmers. Uh, as you can see, it does go through all the different types. It just changes them very quickly, really, really fast. So it's pretty cool. Game rule, command block out, foot falls, please. Okay, kill at E, type equal zombie. That's about it. I went through it pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to go over another situation that you might have, so let's do that now. So let me close all these. So the second one is for a different type of custom mob. Uh, we're going to go in the skeletons to look at this. So this is if you want a mob to spawn another mob. Pretty straightforward. The skeleton, if it's between 1 and 90, it does the same thing. But if the skeleton is between 1 and 90, it is going to make it a skeleton that does not have a bow. But if it's between 91 and 100, it is going to make it, it is going to execute at a random skeleton and play the function custom mob lich. <laughs> Excuse me. So the custom mob lich is going to execute at that mob. So right there, I mean, I don't even have to add this execute at S. I just do it just in case. But it's summoning the custom mob that's not the same. So instead of doing entity data because it's a skeleton and wither skeletons are different than skeletons. It's summoning these wither skeleton and then it's teleporting that skeleton to negative 500 so it dies in the void so you don't see the particles. And that's it. So if you have, say, you want cows to, instead of spawning a cow, it spawns a zombie for some reason, you can execute at the cows, play the function, and then in the function you're going to summon a zombie and then teleport the cow to negative 500. And then this is just a constant thing that will play at the Lich to give it particles and people near him, radius of three, different reason for that. Um, anyways, so we're going to just, I'll just show you that the Lich thing works. I'm gonna copy this and change the words to skeleton. But really, other than that, guys, that's all there is to this. There's, it's really expandable. You can make it go to skeletons, you can make it go to spiders, you can make it go to creepers, you can make it go to zombies. I'm gonna leave you guys a folder that says zombie and I'll give you one example. It'll be output between one and 100 in entity data, and it'll just add the tag of tagged, and that's that's all you get from me. Sorry, I don't wanna ruin too many things. Um, so let's do reload. And let's get a skeleton egg, just so you can see that it spawned. Oh, we got a lich right away, awesome. So there's the lich. Uh, also, 
Additionally, it spawns skeletons without a bow. Sometimes you have a little graphical glitch and they will have a bow. I think I fixed it though. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's a lich. There should be a lich only 10% of the time. Yeah, there you go. It's about, uh, it's about 10. It's just we're getting lucky. But um, yeah, so there's a lich sometimes. And um, yeah, as you can see, there's random chance that it spawns as a lich and random chance that it spawns as a regular skeleton. Uh, so that's pretty much all there is for this one. Um, I'm still on vacation and I've been gone for about two weeks, but I'll be back uh, this weekend to my normal place um, and I'll be able to record a lot more for you guys. Sorry about that. I've been up to Yosemite. It was raining and cold, so it wasn't exactly the best summer Yosemite thing, but uh, it was pretty cool looking, if you're wondering. I'm probably going to be doing some live streams sometime soon, maybe next week, and I'll be doing a maybe a new survival series if you guys want to see it leave a comment in the description there was something really cool that came out so i might do that uh, but anyways guys thanks for watching i hope this tutorial was useful for you i hope you find some kind of use for it uh, if not it's just a cool thing to see as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you all later